thought Mm -hmm. um, because as much as we would like to just throw the pandemic behind us, we have, you know, ramifications of all that time not socializing. Mm-hmm. So um, I think, you know, the time frame looked right and the classes looked right and everything on paper looked right. Mm-hmm. But I think students and staff both and myself included were all just kind of a little bit off. Mm-hmm. <laughs> we, yeah. yeah, we had to kind of relearn um, what does a normal school year look like? Sure. You know, it's funny. We were talking about this a little bit before we got started. Mrs. Patrick, I know you mentioned you were at CES this year. And yes. and what you saw was largely academic. But Mrs. Wickenhauser, what you saw was a lot of behavioral mm-hmm. things. Yeah. And, and not necessarily bad behavior, just kind of social behaviors. Yeah. How about that? Right. And I had um, I had several conversations with parents who were also seeing this in their own children and were concerned and and feeling like their kid was the only one. And so it was comforting for me to be able to say to them, oh, by the way, it's pretty much all of them right now. Mm -hmm. So it's okay. Um, But just that time frame of these children when they were toddlers were on lockdown. Mm -hmm. And so the playgrounds weren't open and no, none of the places where you socialize were open. And so the children just, A, they weren't around other kids. Mm -hmm. They were in structured situations and they were, you know, home with mom, which is wonderful Mm -hmm. to get that extended time. But then walking into kindergarten, they were just kind of like, what is this? Right. (laughs) What is this new world that Mm -hmm. I have? And it was a whole new world. Mm -hmm. And, you know, by the end of the year, They just were amazing, did Mm -hmm. really, really good. But we had just some different things that we've never really had to deal with before. Yeah, for sure. And this isn't necessarily something I'm going to ask you all to weigh in on, but it's it's one of those trade offs we really did not consider when we when we went into, you know, made the decision we did around covid. And and here we are four years, three and a half, four years later hearing the ramifications and the lack of consideration for the the decisions we made then again, that's not for you all to weigh in on, you know, that's for somebody else. But I do want to ask, how do you transition kids that they're not, they're not used to being in a classroom full of people that that socialization piece was, was largely absent for some of them. Um, How, how do you adjust to that? Well, we have a gifted, gifted kindergarten group of teachers, all six of them. Mm -hmm. And what makes them good kindergarten teachers is they know how to break things down into very small steps and you just start at zero and you work up. Mm -hmm. And so normally they may have started in one spot, but collectively as a group, they looked around and they said, "Mm, they're not ready for that. Mm -hmm. And so um, I believe a couple of my kindergarten teachers have previously taught preschool. So they kind of dove back into their preschool toolkits, mm-hmm. shared that information with the ones who hadn't. Mm-hmm. And, and they were able to go, okay, we've got to build from here mm-hmm. instead of where we would normally start. And you just, you know, you just start laying that foundation wherever yeah. the kids are ready to start. Does that, did that detract from the normal progression of a kindergartner, of a first grader? Did that, did that hold you back? And, you know, we have to take the first two to six weeks to do these things and that's going to take away from what we're supposed to be doing and that's just going to put us behind the eight ball. How about that? Initially, when the year started, teachers were feeling very much like, we are not going to get as far as we do academically. Mm -hmm. Um, And even up to Christmas, we were all kind of going, oh boy, what what are we going to do? But as, as young children do, they, there's developmental windows are just, you know, they're so fluid. And by the end of the year, we really felt like the majority of the kids were in a really good place. Yeah, for sure. Yeah, for absolutely. sure. Absolutely. They, you know, we came back after Christmas and they just started, you know, kind of everything comes together and, mm-hmm. And they were able to move ahead. So, That's yeah. great insight. That is great insight for sure. Again, our guest in studio this morning, Mrs. Beth Wickenhauser, is the principal of Lincoln and Douglas Elementary Schools in Clinton. Jessica Patrick is going to take over as principal next year and joins us as well. And so I want to ask Mrs. Wickenhauser, normal school year, you know, we put all the COVID things that you saw mm-hmm. aside in a normal school year. What What's a normal school year look yeah. like in your, in your buildings? Well, so we went back to having all grade level recesses. So um, during COVID, everybody had an individual recess time and everybody had an individual lunch time and everybody had an individual bathroom time. And we tried not to pass in the hallways. And so there was all of the distancing. And so this year we were able to go back to, you know, all of kindergarten, all of first grade have recess and all of kindergarten, all of first grade have lunch together. Mm-hmm. And, and we could intertwine groups and not have to worry about 
if somebody got a germ or not. And mm-hmm. so right. it was just much more, uh, more of the, um, the happy, loud chaos that makes school a fun place to be. Yeah, for sure. <laughs> yeah. For sure. So, yeah, yeah, definitely. Yeah. Well, that's, and so what in a normal school year, uh, what makes Lincoln and Douglas school special that you can, uh, you know, like whether it's events or, or, you know, special things going on that you were able to bring back and have right. again this year? We did. Um, we have a monthly assembly uh, that we do with the children. It's very short, 10 to 12 minutes. And the children have a little class cheer they do. And we do monthly peace builders. Mm-hmm. And we do a birthday for everybody. So we brought that back and we hadn't been able to do that. We were able to bring people back into have assemblies for the school. We hadn't been able to do that. We were able to welcome back um, people to come into the classrooms like Connie Unruh from the mm-hmm. First National Bank right. and um, our librarian mm-hmm. um cory campbell came in and so we were able to bring some of those community things back in that's fun that's a lot of fun for everybody as well uh and of course end of the year it felt like uh this year there were more like field trips like i i we were talking about you know my my seven and nine year old have gone through your buildings and it felt like my seven year old got maybe a few more things than my nine year old did yeah, she probably but, did yeah and that and boy she, the nine year old knew about it too <laughs> which is yep oh for sure what what types of things that does that look like yeah. Yeah, um, usually each grade level will take a fall and a spring field trip. Mm-hmm. Um, this year, they each went to see a movie, um, you know, a trip to the zoo, mm-hmm. those kinds of things. A little bit more walking trips. And I've always encouraged that. I'm like, get them outside and walk around the block a few times. Right. And so we were just able to do more of those fun things mm-hmm, mm-hmm. for sure. Well, Mrs. Wickenhauser in our final minutes of this, uh, this segment, I kind of want to ask about your journey to being oh, a principal at Lincoln okay. and, and Douglas schools. I, I don't think I've ever asked you your journey into education okay, and, sure. and here in Clinton. How about okay. that? Well, it's a long career, so it may <laughs> take a while, <laughs> but no, I started, um, as a special education teacher in January of 1985. Mm-hmm. I was 21 years old. Mm. Um, and so then was immediately started on a master's degree. I taught special education. I then became um, a special education supervisor, all of this in the state of Texas, mm-hmm. and then moved to Illinois in 1995 mm-hmm. and um, went back into the classroom then and taught some more, then went back and became a special ed administrator, then went back in the class. I just kind of kept going back to the classroom. Yeah. Um, and so I was actually at Douglas School and started a special ed program there. Mm-hmm. Um, as a teacher for six years. And then when Linda Rule retired in 2010, I became the principal there. Gotcha. Gotcha. Now I'm, I'm uh, starting to learn that, you know, in education, becoming an administrator isn't always the path you set yourself mm-hmm. out on. Mm-hmm. Uh, when did you kind of start thinking right. about administration? And, I and actually being... really pretty early in on my career, I had some really, really good mentors. Mm -hmm. And I was working um, in some school districts with some very strong women in leadership. Mm -hmm. And they were just amazing people. And they just encouraged me. And they said, even if you want to do this now, do it now, Mm -hmm. get the degree, get the credentials, have the stuff because Mm -hmm. you just don't ever know. Mm -hmm. And these were women who were at the end of their careers. Mm -hmm. So it was easier for them to look back and say, here are opportunities that may come your way that at 22, you cannot see. Mm -hmm. So I just I just tried to be obedient and followed what they wanted me to do. <laughs> sure. And and so here I am. Yeah, yeah, for sure. Now, what from your perspective, whether it's from an administrative, uh, you know, perspective, uh, a teaching uh, perspective, wherever this comes to mind. But what are some of the biggest changes in education? I think a few may be obvious, but how about others? Sure. I think some of the biggest changes are just in the capacity to educate everyone. Mm -hmm. Um, Public schools were initially set up for a very small, narrow group of kids, Mm -hmm. um, and that has expanded. I, of course, me being a special ed person, I feel like it hasn't expanded as quick as it should. But um, I feel like that our our teachers who aren't specialists are coming out of college with better training Mm -hmm. to be able to go, hey, I'm going to have a really broad range of kids in my group. Mm -hmm. And I need to be able to meet from A to Z, not just that group that's kind of in the middle. And so I feel like our teachers that are coming out come out knowing that 
they're just going to have a really interesting group of diverse children in their rooms yeah, and they're yeah. ready for that. And even if they don't have the strategies and the skills, they know where to get the help. They're mm -hmm. willing to go to other people and say, hey, I've got this kiddo. Mm -hmm. What do you think might work? Sure, so sure. I think that has been a huge improvement. For sure. Now, tell talk to me a little bit about just highlights uh, in, in your time in education. Is there mm -hmm. it's like an initiative you started or, or like what, what comes to mind for I you? I think probably at Clinton when I started here 21 years ago, the majority of our special ed students were sent to schools in Bloomington. Mm -hmm. um, the kids that were kept on campus were just kind of those academic needs, but anybody that had a need outside of academics was spent was sent to a different school. Okay. And so that got exponentially expensive mm -hmm. and those schools became full. And so they started saying, no, you need to be doing this on your own, mm -hmm. in your own district. And so I started a program at Clinton Junior High School um, that was for higher needs special ed students. Mm -hmm. And I did that for two years and they kind of got that program growing and expanded it into the high school. Mm -hmm. And then they had a need at Douglas School for some kids that were coming out of preschool that needed support, but they just weren't going to walk into a general kindergarten room and be successful. So right. I started that program there. Also. Wow, that's really cool. I mm -hmm. never knew all that. Yeah. That's amazing. Mm -hmm. Good stuff. Very good. Well, what do you have planned for retirement, Mrs. Wickhauser? Um, I'm planning on sitting in a rocking chair and rocking my grandson <laughs> <laughs> for as long as he'll let me. Yeah, for sure. Living the life. Very good. Very good. Well, Mrs. Wickenhauser, let's take a time out here. And uh, sure. thanks for sharing all that with us. We appreciate it very much. You're Beth welcome. Wickenhauser is the principal of Lincoln and Douglas Elementary Schools in Clinton. And we'll talk more with her and Mrs. Jessica Patrick, who will be the principal of those buildings come next year. More to come on the WHOW Morning Show. Your own home without the maintenance. If you're 55 or better, a beautiful Liberty Village Villa could be yours. This is Erin, and I invite you to come take a tour of our move-in ready villa. Click the Liberty Village icon at DeWittDailyNews.com. DeWittDailyNews.com is the area's leading local news source 24 hours a day, 7 days a week. Get the latest local news, obituaries, police blotter, weather forecast, and more with no paywall. Head to DeWittDailyNews.com to get the local information you need to know. Allergy season is here, and that means sneezes, sniffles, headaches, and all that goes with it. CEO Paul Scarin here from Warner Hospital and Health Services, here with a way to get relief. Come to our walk-in clinic inside our family medicine center. We'll treat those allergies that you have, sneezing, blowing your nose, and just making you miserable. No appointment? No problem. Come to our walk-in clinic inside our Family Medicine Center at Warner Hospital in Clinton and get better fast. More than 80 million Americans depend on AM radio for their news, weather, sports, and a community connection. It's the backbone of the emergency alert system. It's critical that we keep AM radio in cars because when cell and internet services are down, this free emergency service could be your only lifeline. Text AM to 52886 and tell Congress we need AM radio in cars. Message and data rates may apply. You may receive up to four messages a month and you may text stop to stop. This message furnished by the National Association of Broadcasters. Hey, this is Todd Gleason from Illinois Extension here with a time change for our daily market report on WHOW. You can now catch our daily review of the commodity markets at 506 on all of WHOW's many platforms. You'll still hear all of our commodity analysts and weather professionals each afternoon, but at a brand new time. And you'll still hear the weekly wrap up of the commodity markets right here on WHOW when Commodity Week airs Saturdays at 8.30 a.m. Remember the time change for the daily closing market report on WHOW at our new time, 5.06 p.m. weekdays. Your friend in Central Illinois. Once again, a good morning. Thanks for being with us. I'm your host today, Seth Lawrence. And again, the morning show streams to Facebook and YouTube brought to you by Peterson Insurance, your Pekin insurance agent in Clinton. Mrs. Beth Wickenhauser is the principal of Lincoln and Douglas schools. And Mrs. Jessica Patrick will take over her role when Mrs. Wickenhauser retires here in a few weeks. And so, Mrs. Patrick, first of all, thanks again for making time for us today. Tell us a little bit about yourself and your journey to uh, Clinton. Uh, thank you for having me. Um, so the journey to Clinton was kind of a shock. It was a little bit of a surprise, not something that was in the long-term plan, mm -hmm. but it's kind of a happy accident. Mm -hmm. So I actually started my career in Merle Forsyth. I soon taught there after graduating from Milliken. Mm -hmm. um, and then I was kind of the student teacher that never left. <laughs> and then I hopped around for a few years until I figured out what I wanted to teach. Mm -hmm. um, so I taught kindergarten for a year. 
I spent three years in third grade, three years in fifth grade, and I loved it all. Mm -hmm. And then before I left the district, I was an intervention specialist. Okay. Pretty much a reading specialist. Yeah. Um, so earlier when you were talking about the kiddos coming in <laughs> after a few years of the pandemic and things like that, um, so I was working with a lot of kindergarten first graders that had never really been in a school setting yeah so i did that for a couple of years and absolutely mm -hmm. loved it mm -hmm. um and then the path to administration was something i also didn't see coming and i met mr nettles last year mm -hmm. about this time and i had previously known drew goble yeah and jim peck mm -hmm. and i just decided i think these are the people that i would love to work with the mm -hmm. place that i would like to be uh-huh sure so everything just kind of fell into place and mm -hmm. i taught fifth grade this year mm -hmm. and they gave me an opportunity to apply for beth's job and mm -hmm. Here we are. You know, and I don't I don't want to speak out of school, but I know that there was an opportunity you had sought in the district last year mm -hmm. and, and that didn't come to fruition. But right. efforts were made to say, we want you here. Do you, do you mind speaking to that? Sure, of course. So I had just finished my uh, admin de degree and program about this time last year. And I was encouraged to apply for the junior high assistant principal position, mm -hmm. um, even though <laughs> I am not a middle school person. That was not my realm. And I wasn't even sure I wanted to be an assistant principal, to be honest with you. Mm -hmm. um, but I went to the interview and I'm so glad that I did. It was the longest interview I think I've ever <laughs> had in my life. But it was a fantastic conversation. And I yeah. walked out of the high school library just thinking this is the place where I need to be. These are the mm -hmm. people that I need to be with. Um, mm -hmm. Kurt Nettles is kind of the person that I feel like you would follow into battle. And that is very much how I felt like this is where I needed to be. Mm -hmm. So even though the um, middle school wasn't the place for me, not the best fit, and mm -hmm. I think everyone kind of knew that, mm -hmm. I think there started to be kind of a long-term plan of where do I need to be and how am I going to get there? Yeah, yeah. So now how did that kind of morph into you taking a position at CES and then obviously coming into Mrs. Wickenhauser's role? So I had met Mrs. Young and Mrs. Wickenhauser during the interview process last year. Mm -hmm. And I think there's something about the elementary, early childhood uh, teachers and administrators that you just instantly bond connect and mm -hmm. you can feel that across the room i feel like sometimes mm -hmm. so when mrs young had an opening um she just called me it was after the interview so i i just met her mm -hmm. it was kind of fresh on her brain and mm -hmm. she just said if you're ready for a change i have this opening if you want to teach fifth grade for me this year mm -hmm. and then apply for beth's job mm. she knew that was my path eventually yeah she said i fully support that and i would mm. rather have you for one year than mm. not have you at all. That's really cool. What did and you think about that? I was terrified because <laughs> I, this conversation happened less than two weeks before school started. Uh huh. So I had really no intention of making a big change like mm. that. Wow. Um, and this change would also be a change for my daughter who was mm -hmm. going into second grade. Yeah. And she has always kind of gone to the school where I'm teaching. We mm -hmm. do this together. So I got off the phone with Mrs. Young. Um, my husband said to me, I don't know what that conversation was about. But just judging from the look on your face, say yes. Oh, Take really? This opportunity. Oh, wow. That's really um, cool. And I talked with my daughter and I said, if we do this, we do this together. Mm -hmm. She said, let's do it. Wow. That's really neat. So, yeah. So talk about your thoughts on and feelings on jumping into an administrative uh, role here in a few weeks. So that was also kind of a new thing for me. So growing up, I I didn't, never wanted to become a principal. I didn't mm -hmm. even know what a principal does. Mm -hmm. I had always wanted to be a teacher. Um, I knew in third grade when I had Mrs. Donaldson, mm -hmm. who was at CES, Man. that I, I wanted to be a teacher. Mm -hmm. uh, being an administrator, that actually came up probably during the pandemic. Um, and I had started the a leadership program through EIU. Mm -hmm. Just um, I was starting to become a little more drawn to leadership roles, mm -hmm. not necessarily admin, but mm -hmm. just leadership. I liked helping mm -hmm. and participating in heavy discussions in the district mm -hmm. and being part of change. Mm -hmm. um, but as I was going through the program and like Beth had said, you start to realize how inspirational other people are that are in these roles. Mm -hmm. And you see them doing it and you kind of think, I like this work. I think maybe I want to do this too. For sure. For sure. And then, like I said, I, I met the right people here, I mm -hmm. think. Mm -hmm. And so this is kind of, happened. this is kind of a broad, big question. Uh -huh. what, what are you all about in the, in the classroom and with the kids and all that stuff? Um, 
when I taught in the classroom, my kids nicknamed me Mrs. Book Pusher. Mm -hmm. They, that is my Instagram handles, Mrs. Book Pusher, <laughs> because they knew that my life goal was my kids were going to leave my classroom with a book that they love. Mm -hmm. um, that was my goal was to find their favorite book. Mm -hmm. So I'm a huge advocate for literacy, mm -hmm. um, reader engagement, getting families involved, mm -hmm. um, any kind of events that are going to support that, getting mm -hmm. books in kids' hands, getting books in their homes. Mm -hmm. That's probably my one um, non-negotiable is mm -hmm. we need to have students that become readers. That's cool. Because awesome. they want to become a reader. Yeah, for sure. For sure. Well, ladies, hate to do this to you. I have to let us go. Enjoy your summer, Mrs. Patrick. I can't wait to get to know you. Thank you so much. Absolutely. Mrs. Wickenhauser. Enjoy that grandbaby. <laughs> yeah. Awesome. That is Mrs. Beth Wickenhauser and Mrs. Jessica Patrick Clinton at Lincoln and Douglas Elementary Schools. Our guest in studio, The Morning Show, streams to Facebook and YouTube. It's brought to you by Peterson Insurance, your Pekin Insurance agent in Clinton. Of course, we stream live online all the time at DeWittDailyNews.com. Network news on the way on The Morning Show. Yeah.